Hello and welcome back. So what we are going to do today is make our very first app. If you watched the previous uh, Android Studio installation video, so this one is right after that. We are going to make a very simple application. Uh, so I have started Android Studio here. As you can see, it's starting up. I just want to start paint here. Let's see. Uh, paint right right so what the application is going to do is basically going to be a clicker if you ever seen a clicker is this device you hold in your hand to, to count things right so let's say you are you're working at the front door at the club you need to count how many people are coming in how many are going out so you comply with the laws right don't want to overload the place in case there's an emergency. So, uh, you're going to have a button. I just call it click. You're going to have another button. Call it, uh, I don't know, reset. And then here we're going to have uh, uh, basically a label here. Where we can display the numbers so let's say there's a number eight here right so this is an application uh, every time you click on the click button this number goes up so 9 10 11 and so forth every time you click reset number goes back to zero right so you can start over and that's it so <clears throat> i have a project open here i'm just gonna close the project so i was just working on this before close. oops okay closing the okay here we go <clears throat> so we're gonna start a new android studio project we're gonna call it uh clicker God. So here in the company domain, if you have a website domain, you should put it in there. So that will be become part of your package name. If you don't have a website, you can put your first name, uh, last name combination, or something that you think will be uh, unique enough. Because the, the the package name has to be globally unique if you want to publish your application in the Play Store. So there cannot be another package with the same name. Otherwise, it will won't allow you to upload so that's why you use your domain if you have one because that's unique otherwise uh, you just be clever you know first name last name middle name whatever okay so next we're gonna stick to phone and tablet here you can also use uh, Android Studio to create uh, apps for all these other types of devices uh, the watch TV Android Auto we're gonna leave the minimum SDK as it is so you can choose which versions of Android you want to support in your application so minimum will be so your your users will need to have at least ice cream sandwich to install your application if you publish it just gonna leave it as it is this is just a tutorial okay so here uh, what I wanna do is choose empty activity there's blank activity and empty activity which seems like the same thing but uh, the blank activity has this extra floating uh, button here uh, i remember i forget what it's called uh, and it also has uh, the menu i don't need any of those so just gonna put empty here uh, next i'm gonna leave everything as default so our activity name is gonna be main activity and our layout name is gonna be activity main okay so just gonna go finish here to create the project for us, uh, see Grader running here. Grader is a, the the build system that Android Studio uses. I'm actually not connected to the internet right now. I wonder if this will work. Let's see. Build is running. Right, so let that run. Uh, we can carry on. Maybe not. There's there some errors already here. Let that build run first. 
Let's see what happens. Okay, so that's cleared up. Okay, so this is the main activity. Uh, this is a default activity created by the uh, the empty project we chose. So what an activity is is uh, when you see an Android screen, that's most of the time that's an activity, like that one screen which you you're viewing on your phone, which has buttons on it, and that screen of the application that's an activity. So they have the code part of the activity. So we have main activity, and then if you go into the resources layout, you'll see the layout of the activities. So the code controls sort of uh, what the application will do, and uh, the layout is what it will look like. So I just double click that activity here. It should load the 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 layout of of our application. So how how it will look on the screen. It takes a while the first time right so yeah ignore this render problem here just gonna close that right so you can see it's rendered very nicely in a, looks like it would look on an actual phone so they've included this hello world here by default uh, so this is a design view if you go down here you see the design and the text if I click on text to show me the XML so this XML here is what uh, renders as this layout right here. So the XML actually controls how the application will look. So you can see there's a text view here, which is this one here, and it has the text hello world in it. So uh, if you remember, uh, application has a label here, which we said we we're going to display the number, and there's two buttons. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to go back to design view. It already has a label, so I'm gonna leave that one alone, and then then I need two buttons, right? So I'm gonna you can see all the possible views here you can use. Just gonna choose the button one here, and we're just gonna drag it onto the screen, and then you, you can see that this uh, layout lines it, and it sort of sticks to the lines. So as you're moving the mouse around, you'll see it sort of sticks to the middle here, sticks to the sides, sticks to the top, and so on. So I'm just gonna put it here somewhere and then I'm gonna move this I want to move this to the center just drag it to the center um, center somehow center not really mm, do, 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 do. Ah, there we go that's the center okay so if one button there you're gonna drag another button onto the screen have a sec second button so one's gonna be click one's gonna be reset right if I click on the button here, click it once, I'm selected, I can change the properties of the button over here. So I can just change the text here. It says new button, I can put click. And you see the text changes. Now the size of the button has also changed because the text now is a different size and the button grows to accommodate the, the text. What I can also do is uh, if I select this button, I can either double click it. Oops, sorry. I can't actually double click. I can select it and then I can go to the text view. So I'm going to click text down here and you can see the layout XML. See our two buttons here and our text view. Text view is this label here. Okay, so our second button here, I want to change the, the text on the button. So I'm going to, I could just do that instead of uh, Doing it in the properties window, I can just edit it right there, and you can see it changed once again. Also, I want to remove this hello world here because uh, our application is going to be counting numbers. I'm just going to put zero there, there as the first number. Then back to design, uh, I can change some things about this. Uh, maybe I can make it a little bigger. Uh, text, 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 text. So if you go down here, the text size here. Uh, Text size, let me see, 24. Yep, 24 is a possible text size, maybe even bigger, 32. Okay, put it 32 now. You see, DP here is a density independent pixel, if I don't, if I'm not mistaken. So, what this means is it will try to keep the, the text roughly the same size 
regardless of the type of device you are using so because devices have different densities of, of the screen so some are hd screens some are i don't know ultra whatever they are nowadays so if you just if you put a hard size in here it would it would appear differently on all these devices but since this is a density independent size it will adjust itself accordingly uh, depending on the screen resolution yeah, something like that uh, that could be completely technically wrong but th that's sort of what it means okay so again if i go to the text view here you can see this thing there's an id here so id is what identifies this particular view and this is what we we can use to access this view in our code so uh this one is called text view i'm gonna give it a slightly better name here text view uh count right because that counts now you see what happened there i edited the id here and i uh, got an error here this is because this is a relative layout so this button is is positioned relatively to this text view and the way it's positioning itself is by using the id of the text view since so since i've changed the id of the text view this positioning no longer makes sense because this id text view no longer exists right so i need to change it here as well oops sorry don't put enter god okay okay right so i'm just saving here i'm pressing ctrl s to save you can also save over here right so you can see the, the error is gone away i can also change the the id of this uh, button here so it's just called button i'm gonna call it button click then again you see i'm getting uh, the same error here because i've changed the button over there uh, i can do click here uh, click click because as you can see this the second button is lay laid out below the button click right and also aligned to the left of button click and it also aligned with the start of button click so this is how a relative layout works there are different types of layouts but a relative is, is pretty good one because uh it, it it can it can sort of shift with the with the device because it's all relative right so as long as the first one is there it will sort of uh, find the other ones will find themselves in the correct place so this is instead of like hard coding the position of the of the buttons and the, and the views because android devices are very different uh, there are probably hundreds of screen types and resolutions and uh, they even square android phones and all that so relative uh, layout works pretty well okay so what, what are we missing here button two i want to call it button reset right right no errors that's good right so i'm pretty much done with the layout here i'm gonna go to the code now if you go to java here uh, if you remember our package name you'll find the main activity there there's also this test package so that's if you want to run tests for your application to write tests for your application so you can test it automatically but we're not going to do any of that so just go back to the main activity here right so uh, as part of the application android application it's called a uh, life cycle so when you launch an application it goes through a, a, a life cycle and this activity goes through a life cycle so uh, if you if you google android application life cycle i don't have internet right now you will see this nice little sort of flow chart that shows the different stages that uh, an activity goes through and it has various various methods are called at different times so when you start an, an application there's a method called on start that gets called and then there's a method called on create that gets called so on create is where the the layout is set so here we set the content view so we we, we link this code here our main activity to our layout which which, which we just designed right so they are, they are now sort of bound together and this activity will display this layout right so what you want to do here uh, i want to to link those uh, buttons and views to this activity right so i have a button uh, 
call it anything, a button click. Now, as you can see, it doesn't know what a button is, but there is a suggestion here. If you, if I put my mouse, where is it? Uh, over there, it's suggesting that I import Android widget button, right? And it says Alt Enter. So I'm just gonna hold Alt and press Enter, and then this menu pops up. I'm gonna import the class here. I'm sure there's a better shortcut somewhere, but uh, I don't know it. So you see, it has imported Android the widget button. So it has imported the button class, which is what we are using here. And we have a second button, button, oops, button between reset. So that works already because we've already imported that. And then we have a text view. TXT count, right? Again, it doesn't know what the text view is. I need to import that. Import the class, right? Text view. Right, so that's that. So we have created a, a an object of type button, two objects of type button, and objects of type text view. Now we need to link this button to the button in our layout. And we do that through the ID. Right, so here in our on create, we need to do this in the on create. So our button is button click is equal to button find view by id ara dot id dot button click. If you remember, this button click is the name we chose for in a, for a button in the layout, right? Just gonna double click that and that. Right. So what's happening here? Find view by id. A button is a view. All these things on the screen are views. All these items is might be called widgets in other programming languages. Widgets, uh, what they call controls. And if you have ever program, programmed for Windows, they're called controls. Here they're called views. So we're gonna link this button here we created to the view over here, right? So this find view by ID returns a view, uh, and then we need to cast this view into a button. So we can have it over there in our button click. And then we do the same for button reset. Is equal to button. Button reset, right? Uh, so this is the same deal over here. We are linking it to a button reset. And then we need to link the text view. So text count. C count. Now this is a text view, so we need to cast it into a text view. Mm -hmm. uh, text view count, right? That's the name we gave to our text view over here. Uh, the ID we gave to our text view, right? So those are all now linked. So what do we want to happen? We want to re react when the user clicks this button and add add a increment this number here by one, right? So what you need to do is set the on click listener for our click button. Now there are a couple of ways to 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 do this. Uh, so the one easy way is just to have the button click dot set on click listener. So as I type, it's suggesting items, right? Because it, it's uh, Android Studio is intelligent like that. So I'm just gonna select set on click listener, enter, and then in here I need to go again new on. Now make sure you're typing. A capital O here. I noticed this myself. So if I type uh, lowercase O N, nothing happens. But if I type capital O N, uh huh, on click listener, I want the the top one there. So a new on click listener, you see it will fill that out by itself. You see it fills out the inside. So it actually takes a while. There's a like a five second pause there, but you see it completed the the inside method as well. So every time someone clicks a button, this on click method will be fired. So this is called a callback, I believe. So uh, 
what do you want to happen when the on click uh, method is fired we want to to get the, the value that is in here add one to it and then put the value back in the label right so I need uh, my label here uh, text count dot get get text right so I want to get the text from the from the text view so uh, let me just do this the, the long way just gotta go string oops uh, count value sorry this is java right capital s now this doesn't quite work you need to because uh, this get text uh, actually returns a character sequence as you can see there but the string count value is a string so what you need to do is dot to string here right so now we have our uh, the value that is currently in the label we have stored it in a count value variable there now what we probably want to do is convert it to a integer right because this is a string we can't add add numbers to strings so you want to convert this to an integer i'm just gonna go let's see here uh, integer dot uh, is it pass yes pass int so this method here will uh, will convert any string or well, any valid string into an integer so we want the string count value right right so again i want to store this in some uh, now i'm just doing this uh, the long way just for demonstration purposes of course you could do this all in one line but uh, i think it's better this way just for clarity's sake when you you could pull the string at the same time and convert it at the same time and just store it directly in the count value without having to store it first in the in the string there so that's probably what you would do if you are making this up for real now so i have the count value now what i want to do is uh increment it by one right so we do that by using the increment int sorry int count value oops right so incrementing it by one and then we want to store it back in the count value here text view here right i mean in the text count text view so we have a text count and then we do a set and then we put the int count value back in there mm. let's see right so i'm gonna do the string value off just to be on the safe side i'm not sure if you can set the integer directly as the text here i'm gonna do value off int right so what this method will do is convert our int value into a valid string which can be set as the text of the text view so i believe that's it let me see here uh, uh, thinking 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 okay so i'm just saving right control s save and i wanna what i wanna do now is launch our emulator so we can test the application if you go to over here uh, this is android avd android virtual device manager just click that so you see when you installed android studio it created this one uh, virtual device automatically you can create others here create virtual device you can create all types of devices so tvs uh, android wear what is it watches or whatever it is tablets so i'm just gonna cancel that just gonna click play here and uh, it, everything is good we should have a emulator up and running in a few minutes it can take a while depending on your computer depending on all type of stuff it's the emulator performance is really can be quite poor but so just gonna pause the video here and get back to you when we're, we're done
Okay, so it's opening up here. You can see it's like a real device on your screen. I'm just going to close this. It's going to start up like a real phone would start up because this is actually the same Android image that's running on your phone. It's running on your computer. It's it's not an uh, it's not like a fake thing like uh, if you program for I, and, and, I mean iPhone, they have this sort of fake uh, device emulator thing. This is the actual device code that's running on your machine, which is one of the reasons it's so slow. But anyway, see it's booting up there. Ah, see it started up. So it's like a real phone. You just swipe to unlock it. So something has crashed. It's exactly like a real Android phone. Just press OK. That happens the first time when the phone is booting and stuff. OK, so you can see it's just a, like a real device. I can go to the apps here. I have my maps. I have all st type of stuff there. Okay, so what you're gonna do now? You wanna you wanna launch this application? There's a play button here. So here it's a uh, app. Then I wanna press play. Uh, so now uh, Grado is building the the application. This again can be slow. Ah, see, there, just deploy the application now. If you click here, but hopefully that will increase to one. Yep, click, click. Oh, fantastic. Well, job done, not quite. Our reset button does nothing. Okay. So that's because we haven't wired it up. Our click button is working fantastically. Reset does nothing. So we need to wire up our reset button. Again, same deal. We set an on-click listener on the button. New on-click listener. Enter. And then enter again. Ah, okay. So you need to press enter twice there to get the inside methods. Right, on click. Uh, what we want to do when we click, we want to set the counter back to zero, right? So it should be pretty simple. You actually have it here. Copy that, paste it there. Just gonna put a zero in there, right? So it's gonna set it to zero. Oops, 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 oops sorry. Save. Now, if we run it again, this application should relaunch to rebuild the app first. And then it should relaunch. Again, it's asking me which emulator, same one. Shouldn't ask that the next time, hopefully. You can, if you look at Android monitor here, you should be able to see the device log or what's happening. You see here, it's uh, where is it? Yeah, uh, it's loading the app here somewhere. So this is the log cat. Okay, so click, 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 same way. Reset goes back to zero. Click, 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 click. Reset goes back to zero. And if you go to our uh, app drawer, it should be in here somewhere. Click up. Right? Click, 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 click. Reset. Right. Fantastic. So, job done. Go, go and make your millions now. Thanks. See you. I'll be making a lot of, a lot, be trying, to, well, I'll be making a lot of new tutorials based on Android Studio. So please subscribe to the video if you haven't already. I mean to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in a little while. Thank you.